guys thanks for tuning in i hope you're all well wherever you are and whatever you're up to now i don't know about you lot but sometimes i feel like the amount of choice when you come to make something can be a little bit overwhelming and when you look at different categories of patterns or different styles of garments sometimes things can kind of look the same or it's hard to kind of work out what the differences are between them so in this video I wanted to talk to you about a few different sweatshirt or jumper patterns I'm going to kind of use the term a bit interchangeably and just give you some pointers in terms of looking at the line drawing and working out what style they are or what the fit's going to be like, what the kind of style is going to be like, what fabrics to choose and what size to choose as well. But there's a few kind of general things that are kind of consistent whenever you're looking at any patterns. The first one is always to check the finished garment measurements compared to the actual body measurements because that's going to give you an idea of how loose or how fitted the garment is and then to check the amount of stretch that's recommended for the pat for the pattern as well so when you get your fabric it's got to be stretchy enough or it might not need to be that stretchy depending on the style so that's an also, also an important thing to consider the other thing is the seam allowance so from my experience some some patterns use a narrower seam allowance because they're designed to be used with an overlocker so you can still make those patterns with a normal sewing machine you just need to remember that it's a smaller seam allowance basically and um, so always just read the instructions so that you can check before you start what seam allowance you're actually working with because that can have an impact on the finished size of the garment if you're not using the seam allowance that's been designed to be used and then the last thing is to pre-wash 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 um, not necessarily that number of times but pre-wash your fabric um, stretchy fabric sweatshirt fabric will shrink sometimes you can even expect up to 10% of shrinkage which is which you know can be quite a lot and um, so it's better to get that out of the way before you cut your pieces out and you start sewing them together and I've got an example later on of a linden where I, I have pre-washed it and one that's not been washed yet and you'll, you'll sort of see the difference in terms of the fit on the one that's that's basically shrunk in the wash. I also tumble dry a lot and that generally makes things shrink a bit more I think um, so it's another thing to sort of bear in mind but I'm going to talk to you th I'm going to talk you through some different styles and then I've got examples of some of the garments as well um, all of the patterns that I've chosen are indie patterns um, but hopefully there's enough variety in there that whether, wherever you're looking or you find another pattern as well that they'd maybe be similar you just have a bit more confidence in sort of interpreting it so the first two that I've got to show you are hoodies and um, they are quite different the first one is the one that I'm wearing and I absolutely love it it's really snugly which is why I thought I should wear it for the video um, and it is from the Tilly and the Button stretch book which I'm sure you guys have seen already which came out recently and it's the Stella hoodie um, so for my sample that I've made that I'm wearing I used some of our minty fleece back sweatshirt which you can see is quite it's quite kind of spongy and thick and it's got this really lovely soft um, fleecy back to it so it feels uh, very comfy to wear um, but then if we have a little look at the line drawn and then the finished garment measurements just so you can get a bit of um, an idea of context in terms of how the fit actually comes up so from the line drawn you can see it's got a drop sleeve here so this shoulder seems going to sit a little bit lower it's got cuffs on the on the sleeves so then it's you know it's going to be a bit more fitted there and just grip to your wrist a little bit more but then at the bottom it's just hem there's not actually a separate hem band so it's going to be quite loose at the bottom it's obviously got the hood and the hood and this one has got a center panel as well and um, so my sample is a size three and that basically corresponds to my body measurements that is what my body measurements are really obviously it varies depending on the day um, but not that much and then when we look at the finished size measurements you can see that for the bust it's 39 but the body measurements 34 so you've got five eases a uh, five inches of ease there so what you make is going to be five inches bigger so you, know, you can see that it's that it's quite loose to, to reflect that um, so you could have it a little bit tighter if you wanted you could just size down or if you wanted it even looser still you could size up a little bit so that should give you a bit of an idea of of actually what what it's going to look like when it's finished um in terms of the fabric um it, it recommends using a sweatshirt fleece french terry french velour ponte double knit um, and it needs to have at least 10 percent crosswise stretch 
So um, there is a page in Tilly's book that's about testing fabric. So if you've got the book, you can check that out. But if you don't, um, there are other ways that you can check it as well. So on some of the other patterns that I'll show you, they have this little bar chart at the top here. So when your fabric's relaxed, it's that much, then you have to check that it stretches to there. So you can use that. And then you can also download um, this really handy guide from the Megan Nielsen website. Um, I'll put a link to that in the blog post that's linked to this video and it helps you work out the percentage stretch too so it's really useful if your pattern does specify an amount of stretch um, so it's, don't, don't see that as sort of confusing as it might initially seem because there are ways that you can work it out. Um, so that's the Stella hoodie and then to contrast against that we have made the undercover hood by paper cut patterns so it wasn't actually me that made this one Meg was helping me make some of the hoodies Meg works in the shop with me she's the, um, the manager and she made an extra extra small in the undercover hood but my body measurements more closely correspond to the small size um, but you can see he, you can see in the sample that I'm wearing it is a bit more fitted than the Stella. So going by the size chart on the undercover hood, um, the finished measurements for an extra extra small at the bust are 39 and a half inches. My bust is 34, so there is still a bit of ease there, which is fine. And then in terms of fabric, the pattern recommends that you use, let's just have a little look. Um, a cotton knit, a sweatshirt, a cotton lycra, viscose lycra, wool jersey, merino jersey. So it doesn't actually specify the amount of stretch that it needs, but you can you will kind of be able to use your judgment on that by looking at the finished measurement sizes in comparison to the body measurements. And the closer that they are together, that means that the less ease the pattern's gonna have, the stretchier it needs to be so that you can get it on and off. Um, so the undercover hood has got this kind of kangaroo pouch bit at the front which I think is really nice and it's got the hem band as well. The hood on the undercover hood is just got two pieces so it just means the hood's a little bit of a different shape. On the Stella it, it becomes a bit more rounded um, whereas a two piece hood can sometimes be like almost like a little bit more pointy um, but the fabric is nice and floppy anyway so it just sort of relaxes into that so we did use a much lighter weight fabric for this hood it's it's one of our um, loop back sweatshirts and you can see from the back of it that it is the the loop the loopiness of it is much looser it's a much looser weave it's got more drape in it um, but I still think it looks really nice it's just to show you different types of hoodie really and that you can use different things to make hoodies um, so the main difference really between this one and the Stella is that this one has got the raglan sleeves so you can see that the seam line goes from the armhole up to the neckline um, whereas the Stella's got that drop sleeve which, which I was showing you before. Um, you can have the, pot, the kangaroo pouch on the Stella too, I just left mine off. So that's a couple of hoodies. And then the next two that I've got are a bit more sort of neat and nipped in. Um, and they are the Ondi sweater, which is, it's a cropped sweater, which is cinched in at the waist and it's got short sleeves and a contrasting collar. That's one version or with long sleeves and a scoop neck. Um, so the version that I have got to show you is the scoop neck with the longer sleeves. Now I originally made this sample for one of the mannequins in the window before so it is a size bigger than what I would normally make so that's why it looks a little bit loose on me but hopefully it still gives you an idea of this, the shape of the neckline is a bit lower and it is also a very very cropped so I'm wearing it with my high waisted gingers and I mean they just meet and um, you would definitely have to wear a vest under it if you didn't want your midriff showing and um, you may want it showing which is absolutely fine too of course um, but in terms of the finished measurements, you can see that they match a little bit closer. So just taking the size 38, for example, which is probably the size that I should have made if I was making it to sort of fit me into wear, um, they're the same. So it's got it's not got positive or negative ease. The, the garment you make will be the same size as your body. So it will mean that it's quite, it's, that it's tight and that it's fitted to your body. And then the fabric, um, the amount of stretch in the fabric is, is recommended to be at least 30% for this one. And that's why. Um, so that is the on D and then the other one that is very similar to that 
is the Astoria um, and it is, it's a downloadable pattern so we don't have this one in the shop, it's not a printed pattern, it's only available as a PDF and you can get that from the Seamwork website but I'll link to that in my blog post anyway. Um, so it's also got a scoop neck but the neckline's a bit higher um, and it's got the hem band at the bottom as well but the sleeves have just got, um, are just hem, they don't have a cuff on them. So the size that I'm wearing here is a size small which fits my body measurements and then when you look at the size chart you can see that the finished measurements are actually smaller than the body measurements so that means that this pattern has negative ease the thing you make is going to be smaller than your body so it's going to be very fitted and a bit more sculpted to your body which means that it does have to have stretch so it's specifying at least 25% stretch so I use some of our cozy colors fabric for this one which is a really lovely fleece back um, sweatshirt fabric. It's the same that I used for the Ondi, it's just a different colourway. Unfortunately, we don't have the turquoise, but we have got a really nice um, bright sky blue if you like bright blues. Um, and it's got this sort of multi coloured fleck fleece on it. Now, the main thing that you'll notice with my one is that it's not cropped. So I did lengthen my Astoria by five inches and then I also just straightened it out. So from the armhole, I just pretty much straightened it out because it does go in quite a bit at the waist. Um, but it would come to a similar level as the on D. So um, if you like that sort of fit and style, but you'd want it a bit longer, then you can just you can just lengthen it, but do just widen it at the bottom because both of them do go in at the waist. Um, and then the next two that I've got to show you are a bit more, they're a bit smarter really, the versions that I've got. So they are still sweaters, but they're more like a smarter top um, than, than say the hoodie for example. So I have got the paper cut Kyoto sweater and the sample that have we have made um, in is in our look back um, jersey medal so the medal is really really drapey and soft it's got a really lovely flow to it and if you have a if we have a look at the line drawing and the finished garment measurement so this one's got the drop sleeve as well so the seam is going to sit down onto your arm and it does mean that you end up with a bit of extra fabric sort of around your armpit and then you've got this ruffle as well. So I think it, I think it's nice to use something that is a bit lighter and drapier like the Modal for this one. Otherwise it might feel quite bulky in that area. Um, so the size that I am wearing is the extra, extra small. So it was Meg that made this one as well. And when we look at the, the size and chart for it, so I, again, I would have made the extra small really if I, like if I was making it myself to wear but then when you look at the finished uh, garment measurements it's got positive ease as well so the what you make is bigger than what than your body and um, which is why this one still fits me and um, so I, th I think it's really cute it's not my normal style with the ruffle but I actually like it more than I thought I would the other thing that we did differently was um it's just hemmed at the bottom it's not got the hem band on so that sort of just makes it drape a little bit more um, so that is the Kyoto and then the other one that's a bit more of a kind of smarter top is I'm using the So House 7 Toaster sweater pattern for this one so the sample I've got to show you is version 2 and it has got um, a semi-high neck that's like a little sort of mini funnel shape um, but it depends on the fabric you use it sort of just kind of cowls down quite nicely and has a little bit sort of shape and movement in it. It also has a high low hem so the front is higher than the back and then it's got the side vents which I think are really really nice. I love that detail about it. Um, so I'm wearing a size small and you can see that the finished measurements are bigger than the body measurement so it's got a lot of positive ease again so it's going to be quite quite loose and sort of drapey and um, so that again it just gives you another idea of how the fit's going to come up and then it also recommends a certain amount of stretch too um, and it's got that little bar chart to help you work out the stretch which is always useful and um, I haven't actually made version one before but you can see it's got the raglan sleeves um, similar to the undercover hood um, so yeah I've seen some nice versions of that one but I've not actually made that one up yet and then the last two that I've got to show you are, have got a bit more of a sporty vibe to them so 
the old classic green line linden sweater if, if anybody doesn't have this already in their wardrobe then i would highly recommend it and um, i think it's probably one of our most popular patterns over the whole five years that i've had the shop i've got loads of versions myself it's just really quick and simple to make up and it just nice and easy to wear and um, so looking at the line drawn again you can see it's got that raglan sleeve so it's got that diagonal seam from the armhole up to the neckline and um, it's got a long and a short sleeve version and then the long sleeve version has got the cuffs on the sleeves and then the hem band to the bottom as well but i have made a version with it that is long sleeve but it just doesn't have the hem on the bottom um, so I've made it in our look back jersey medal which has got a lot of nice drape and movement in it I've made it in our cosy colours and our marl jersey which is the fleece back sweatshirt fabric which is really lovely and soft to wear and I wear this a lot and um, so I wear a size 4 which corresponds to my body measurements um, and you can see that again it's got positive ease so the body measurement for a size 4 is 34 but then the finish measurement is 40 and a half so it's got quite a lot of positive ease there so it's quite loose and um, this is where I've got a good example of what happens if you if you don't pre-wash basically so this blue version that I've got um, I made it and it was a sample for the shop and I didn't have time to pre-wash the fabric but then I really liked it and started wearing it anyway and was obviously then washing it um, and you can see that it's 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 a little bit more fitted compared to this pink one which is the same size but it's just not been pre-washed so um, that's what happens basically to your garments if you don't pre-wash them they will sort of shrink a bit so just be aware of that I actually quite like the more fitted version but um, you may not be wanting that so just just bear it in mind and then the last one that I've got to show you is the Soholic Fraser sweater which I was really surprised about actually so it comes with three versions and um, I've made up version A to show you um, but it's it's got different sleeve lengths and then it's also got different neckline details you can just have like a plain neckline or this sort of inset collar so the collar's not separate it's actually like sewn into the bodice um, and then the version I've made is version A which has got this yoke detail so I used our two-tone grey look back jersey fabric and the back of the fabric is like lots of little pink loops and it looks really nice as a contrast against the grey so I just reversed the fabric and used the back of it basically when I was sewing it and I think it just looks it's got quite a striking look to it um, and then I put it on the cuffs as well I do kind of regret not doing it on the hem band now but there you go um, and then in terms of the the sizing so I made a size 6 which most closely resembles my body measurements the thing with sewaholic patterns is that they are they do proportionately allow for more at the hips because they're graded more towards a pair figure and I don't have a bare figure um, so it means that my hip measurement is, is quite a bit smaller than what the six is but I decided to just make it anyway because I thought it would be easy to take it in but then I actually didn't so that what, what I'm wearing is just the straight up size six and I, and I think it looks fine um, and then in terms of the actual body and um, the finished measurement sorry it's, it's got a little bit of, of ease in it so um, for the six the body measurements 33 the bust but the finish measurements 35 she's got two inches of ease there which is quite standard really two inches of ease is quite common in in woven fabrics for example garments that are made with woven fabrics for example and that's just so that you can move in it so it is going to be more fitted than than other sweatshirts um, and then you can see that it does recommend you have at least 20 percent stretch there as well so that's just so you can get it on and off um, but yeah, I, I feel like it's got quite a sporty vibe to it, this one, which is not, um, it's got the contrast quite striking for me, but I actually do like it more than I thought I would. So it just gives you a bit of an idea of something, something else that you can do in the sweater range. So I hope you found that useful in terms of looking at sort of different ones and being able to kind of work out what they're going to come up as really, because it can vary a lot um, and, there, and it's nice that there's quite a lot of choice out there now. Um, as I said before, there's a blog post that links to this video, so I'll put the link to that in the description for the video, and then it's got links to all the, the patterns and the fabrics that I've used as well, so the only one that you will have to go elsewhere to get is the Astoria, um, and then the Stella, which is in Tilly's book. We do stock Tilly's book as well, but you can obviously get that from other places too um so thanks for watching and um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel then just remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video um, and i'll see you next time thanks guys bye